everybody, it's Boone White with a 323 Concept Furniture Restoration here. Um, today we are working on this chest of drawers and I wanted to do a video on how to paint a piece of furniture, um, just how simple it can be. A project like this really doesn't take, uh, take as much time at all. Granted, if you are a DIYer and you don't have a paint sprayer, it may take you just a little bit more time. But other than that, it's a very basic project. Um, you could probably finish it in one day if you're if you're hand painting if you're spraying it You know, you might be looking at a half day project. So um, Without further ado, let's jump right into the project. We'll show you how we go about it All right, so we are working on this Bassett five drawer chest of drawers and we are going to be painting it the customer started um, So it looks like we're gonna be painting it this blue color. That's what they wanted um, so without further ado uh, let's jump right into step number one. Uh, step number one is going to be disassembly. I always like to take it completely apart um, or as much as I possibly can. That gives me an idea if I need to make any repairs. Um, so once I take the drawers out, I'll notice, you know, hey, is there any drawer glides that need adjustments or repair um, once, we get it, uh, once we get it painted? So um, first step, let's disassemble. Okay, so when you're pulling your drawers out, a lot of the times you'll notice a little bit of resistance right towards the end. Well, if you look up underneath it, um, you'll usually see some sort of uh, tab. Um, there's a couple different styles, so I'll just show you which one this one has. But a lot of times you'll even see a little white plastic tab that you have to push up or down to, to clear the frame, and then you can pull it out. But a lot of the times, if you just give it a good little tug, you'll see these little brown rubber, uh, these little brown plastic tabs they put on the bottom. And that just keeps your drawer from falling out um, for safety. So um, if you give it a good little pull, a lot of the times those, those will come right out. Okay, there's a couple different things I check once I get the drawers out of the way. Um, main thing is I want to make sure these glides are in good condition. Um, a lot of times on older glides, they may wear down and, and may need replacement. So I check all those, make sure they're not loose. Uh, the second thing I check are these uh, these plastic tack glides that go on both edges. Those sit underneath the bottom edge of the side of the drawers, and that keeps it um, from wobbling back and forth. So if you've got a wobbly drawer going, you know, up and down a little bit, um, these would be the reason why. Usually those are missing and may have worn down. Um, so I double check all those in which case all of ours are good. The only thing I did notice is on the drawer itself. So let me sort of show you Like I mentioned all these drawers have the brown plastic little piece on the end to keep it from coming out It's supposed to be stapled into the side. Well, it looks it's looks like at some point um, They may have been roughed up a little bit Maybe somebody pulled it out incorrectly, but this one had come off and I noticed several of the others are like that. So we'll remove these staples and staple those back in and we should be good to go. And in the process, I'm gonna visually inspect these, uh, the female end of the drawer glide and make sure that those are in good condition. And then this uh, piece on the end, this is a drawer glide guide. And this is basically where um, it slips onto the male end of the glide and that keeps it um, keeps it a little bit more secure so if your drawer glide, if your drawer is doesn't feel secure a lot of the times these guides on the back end have broken loose and it may need replacement so um, that's definitely a few things that i like to check to make sure that uh, especially if you're having known issues you know that's when i start really start checking those areas all right, so now that I've checked those, I'm going to go ahead and proceed by taking off these drawer handles. The customer opted to replace them with these nice brass ones they picked up. We'll get a better view of those here in just a little bit. Um, but we can proceed by taking off these old wooden handles and we can just chunk them since the customer won't be needing those anymore. Okay, just a pro tip, if you are reusing your original wooden handles and they need to be painted, um, a lot of the times I'll take a piece of pegboard and I'll just thread this up through the bottom side of the pegboard, handle on top, screw on bottom, and uh, you've got a nice secure way to keep your handles still while you paint them.
right, so we finished step one, which was disassembly. It took all of maybe five or 10 minutes. This one wasn't bad at all. Um, second step is when I get into the cleaning phase, um, I use crud cutter cleaner degreaser. It's a deglosser and degreaser. So it'll take that shine off of a high gloss piece of furniture if you need to. Um, but more than that, it preps that surface, it cleans it and it degreases it. It preps that surface um, for a good primer coat to go on. Um, you can also use a coating or a cleaner called TSP. Uh, it also works very good, but I've been using crud cutter for years and I've always been happy with, with the results. So um, I got a concentrate, so I ended up mixing the crud cutter with water, put it in my own spray bottle, it goes a long way. Um, this will last me quite a while. So um, when you're cleaning it, you can just use a rag, but a lot of the times I like to take one of these finishing pads and really, really clean them good, get off any grease or grime. Um, if you're doing dining chairs or something that gets a lot of touching to certain areas, like dining chairs on the backs, if you don't clean those those backs where people are touching all the time, um, or if it's a if it's a drawer like this, right where all the handles are at, if you don't clean around that area, a lot of the times when you prime or paint, you'll notice that the paint doesn't adhere correctly, and that's because there's oils that have built up over time, and um, a lot of the times that'll show up in your when you get to the priming and painting if you don't clean it right. So okay, so once we clean it, you can also go into the next step of scuff sanding, and that's going to help with better adhesion. Um, it's not 100% necessary. I've gotten by with just using crud cutter quite, quite often. But if, you, if it makes you feel better and you want a little better adhesion, you can get some sandpaper. Probably 150 grit would do just fine. And you can scuff sand. You're not sanding to remove the finish. A lot of people don't know that. They think when you're repainting something, you always have to remove the finish 100%. Well, you don't. Um, you can just scuff sand it. You're just preparing that finish to, add, uh, to accept the primer correctly. So um, you really just need a, a really quick scuff sand. And that would be a good time if you notice any divots, dings, scratches on your furniture that don't come out. Um, just by light sanding, you want to use that time to, to get some wood filler and fill that in and then sand it down, clean it one more time. And uh, this, this furniture was actually in really great shape, so um, I'm not sure if we'll come across that. If we do, we'll definitely show you how, but uh, without further ado, I'm going to get into the cleaning phase and we're just going to go through, spray on our crud cutter, um, wipe it down with a good finishing pad, and then I also have some cloth rags that I'm going to wipe it down and then we'll let those dry completely. So we got the drawers all cleaned up. Now we can move over to the frame of the chest of drawers and the legs, everything else basically. Um, but one, one thing I wanted to mention is when you're disassembling this, feel free to get a piece of tape and label the bottom of each drawer. A lot of the times you've got five drawers in five different sizes and it'll just help in the long run if you label what, what went where. Same thing with hardware. If you're taking any hardware off, Put them in Ziploc bags, label that bag where it came from, take pictures, uh, whatever you can do to help yourself when you get back to the re when you get back to assembling it, and that'll sort of help you in the long run. Okay, so I am done the cleaning phase. Just letting the crud cutter dry out. As you see, it's drying out a little bit. Um, the only thing I noticed was just a little bit of rough texture on the top, and I'm gonna address that with my orbital sander. And lastly, I noticed where the customer sort of did their test painting, it was, it's got a little bit of a heavy brush stroke. It may not be visible on camera, but um, I'm just going to sand that down just a little bit because when I spray it, it's going to lay down a really smooth finish. And if I don't sand that down, it'll show up. So uh, we're just letting that crud cutter dry out um, until it's dry. And once it is, we can go in there with an orbital sander or you can do it by hand and just sort of smooth out any, any areas that need to be addressed that you saw.
While that's drying, I'll, I'll mention this. While that's drying, I'm gonna go ahead and start prepping my drawers. Since we are spraying, um, I wanna cover all of my drawer boxes um, so that they don't get oversprayed. So without further ado, we're gonna go into uh, that portion of our, of our prep. And that's really all we have to prep. Um, We'll tape those off. We'll tape those off so that we don't get overspray on the drawer boxes. And then I'm gonna find a way to mount these into a piece of wood because these are gonna be a lot easier to spray um, if they're not on the bottom of the piece. If you've ever painted a piece, you know it can sort of be a pain in the butt to um, get the inside, uh, the inside facing of these legs when they're installed. So um, we're gonna mount them and we're gonna spray them. So uh, let's jump into that portion. And just an update, we're probably only about 20 minutes into this, into this job so far. Um, I'm anticipating prep will probably take another 10, 15 minutes, and then we'll be ready to sand down the top. It'll, it should be dry by that point. Um, so we'll probably be maybe 20 minutes. And after that, we can start priming and painting. Okay, I got my drawers prepped, and as I stated, I've got my legs that I need to position somehow for when I spray them. And I used to have a board. I must have chunked it when I was cleaning shop at the end of last year. Um, but basically what I'm gonna do is create a way to mount these into the board. I've got these insert nuts. Um, so I'm gonna drill a hole, mount these insert nuts into the board, and then I'll thread my legs into the insert nuts, and that'll hold them as I spray them. So, If you don't have insert nuts, you could use regular nuts as long as your bolt goes all the way through. Um, if it doesn't go all the way through, that's the sort of the benefit of these insert nuts. And for my for my purpose, these were 5 16 inch, um, just in case you wanted to know, but your legs could have different thread sizes. So the typical, the two sizes that are real typical are quarter inch and 5 16 um, For heavier furniture, 5 16 is more than likely what it's going to be. But, always check. All right, so those are ready to spray now. That'll make it a lot easier. All right, uh, that concludes our I think that was our third step. I don't know. I lose track. <laughs> but we, so we disassembled it. Then we went into cleaning and prep, um, or cleaning and sanding. And, and then we did some prep work. I don't know. All the steps sort of blend together. As long as you disassemble first, and then you, um, I like to clean before I sand. That way, when I'm sanding, I'm not sort of sanding in any type of um, oils or gum. Uh, any contaminants into the finish. So um, I usually like to clean it first, then you do any sanding that you need. Um, that sanding can, you know, any fill work that you need after that, that would be a good point to address it. Um, after you clean it and you sort of lay your hands on the whole piece, you sort of see where it may need that fill work, that would be a good point to do that. Um, so sand it, and like you saw just now, I cleaned it after I sanded it as well. You wanna get it, all that dirt, grease, grime. That's the, the enemy of a good finish that lasts for a long time, is any type of contaminant. You know, oils, grease, grime, dirt, 
Um, it needs a good finish to adhere to. So that's why we clean it, that's why we sand it. Uh, you want your primer to have something good to stick to. So um, without further ado, we are ready to prime it and paint it now. And like I said, for my process, I, I spray it. I use an HBLP sprayer, it's a five stage turbine. Um, but I've been using it for, you know, it's an Apollo uh, five stage turbine, 7700 atomizer gun, and it has done really well for us. Uh, in the last few years. A few hiccups with the machine here and there, but they're sort of working through that. Um, and I think it's back up and running again. It hasn't given me trouble in about a year, so that's good news. Um, all that being said, it's a, it's a great sprayer if you're looking to sort of up your game and your efficiency in your shop. But if you're a DIYer, um, I, don't, I don't think it's necessary. I think you can get a really good coating with uh, brushing it and rolling it, maybe a foam roller, um, but for my process and my purpose, I'm going to be showing you how we spray it. Um, and honestly, once you get to that point, that's the easiest part of the process is, is painting. You know, people think of painting their piece of furniture and it's just like painting your house. You know, it's, it's fun and enjoyable, but it's really only about five to 10% of the project. <laughs> so all the prep, the prep is key. So, um, but we are ready to prime and paint. I'll stop talking your ear off and um, we are probably 45 minutes, no more than an hour into our project, and we're already ready to prime and paint. Um, so we'll keep you updated on our timing as, as we get to the end. So we'll see y'all, thanks. Okay, so I've got the first coat of primer on the chest of drawers, and um, I'm actually using a new primer. Um, sorry, it's got paint all over it, but it's a Zenser Primer Coat uh, 2, and this is my first time using it. And I, uh, let me preface all that by saying I used to use the Zenser um, shellac based primer, which I love that primer, but a couple of reasons I'm sort of trying to get away from that. One, it's, um, it's a little harsher. It's, uh, the cleanup is by denatured alcohol, so that's another $17 per gallon um, that I've got to spend and for all the cleanup. Uh, the fumes, like I said, the fumes are, are very, very strong on it. Um, all that being said, I do like that primer because it dries extremely quick. It levels out really well. It sands really well. It hides um, tannins and dyes really well. But, um, and lastly, it has gotten very expensive. Um, ever since COVID, obviously y'all know prices have shot up and the shellac based primer is up to I think about $75 a gallon and 337 for a five gallon container. So I was looking through my options the other day, saw this one, it was closer to about $30 a gallon. Um, or if you get the five gallon option, I think it was closer to like $25 a gallon. So um, it's a lot cheaper, it's water-based. Um, it still has a quick dry time. It says that you can top coat it in an hour, which isn't bad. Uh, it's not quite as good a dry time as shellac-based primer, but I can live with that if uh, so far I got it on there it looks like it uh, is super smooth it doesn't look like it's sagging at all uh, which I usually don't have an issue with that but if you get a real heavy bodied um, paint or primer you know you can have issues with sagging but don't see that yet um, it doesn't look like it hides quite as well as the shellac based primer but um, I'll, I'll probably be able to tell a little bit more of that on other projects. This one was pretty straightforward. Um, there weren't a lot of stains or anything. So, but um, so far on a scale of 10, I'd rate it maybe a seven, eight, um, but it's, it's cheap enough and the benefits are good enough where I think I would reuse it um, down the line. So if you're looking for a primer, you might try this one out, see if you like it. Um, but other than that, we've got our first coat of primer on. I'll probably give it about 45 more minutes to dry and then I'll shoot a second coat on there. Uh, if it needs it, it may not even need it. Um, the finish was in pretty good shape and it's uh, honestly really smooth at the moment. So I may end up just doing one coat and then and paint it. So um, we'll give it a little bit to dry, inspect it, and then we'll uh, check back and see what we need to do.